السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear Dr. Ahsan Al-Ahsasna, Dr. Hassan, uh, today's our guest speaker, uh, distinguished professors, lecturers, uh, researchers, uh, my brothers and sisters. This is our uh, privilege to welcome you all uh, to this session entitled The Fundamental Aspects in the Islamic Financial Planning and Advisory. And uh, as you know, uh, this event uh, is a part of our initiatives, programs, events, lectures, and uh, uh, trainings uh, organized by the Islamic Economics Association in the Faculty of Sharia and Islamic Studies, Kuwait University. Uh, the Islamic Economic Association is trying to become a global hub for Islamic finance and banking through organizing uh, various types of events and taking uh, some initiatives to promote uh, Sharia compliant uh, Islamic and Sharia compliant finance uh, finance models and also uh, standards. So uh, these initiatives um, by the Anadul Iqtisad uh, Dishtami cover uh, a wide range of areas in Islamic banking and finance. As you know, uh, uh, including Islamic banking, Islamic microfinance, Islamic insurance, capital market, equity market, and as well as uh, these uh, events uh, cover also some specific topics uh, such as sukuk, retail, corporate banking products, and contemporary issues, fintech, work of uh, wealth management, and so on. So today, uh, our session is very much important uh, for the uh, fund financial planning and advisory. And we do have our guest speaker who is very uh, well known and also who is an expert in this field, uh, Dr. Ahsan al Hassasna, uh, who is currently uh, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Salehin Sharia Advisory and Chief Academic Officer of Salehin Academy and he is as well a council member of the Malaysian Financial Planning Council, MFPC. Prior to that, he was uh, associate professor in uh, INSIF, a global university of Islamic banking and finance in Malaysia. Currently, Dr. Hassan is the chairman of Sharia Co Committee of Standards Chartered Sadiq Bank, Malaysia. And Dr. Hassan received the uh, Global Business Leadership Award in 2017 and 2019 in Islamic Finance. And Dr. Hassan's uh, Academy, uh, Salehin Advisory and Academy are uh, as well uh, working hard to uh, spread Sharia standards, Sharia compliant standards and model, as you know, is becoming uh, very well known uh, globally. Uh, so this is our uh, very much honor to have Dr. Hassan uh, to deliver a uh, today's lecture on the fundamental aspects in the Islamic financial planning and advisory. So I uh, would like to invite uh, Dr. Hassan to uh, deliver the lecture. Thank you very much, brother. Uh, Salatu wa salam wa rasul kareem. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, uh, Brother Dr. Mahideen, for uh, this kind of introduction. Uh, my thanks and appreciations also to the uh, Nadir of the Saudi Islam in uh, uh, Kuwait University uh, for this opportunity to share uh, <coughs> this uh, important subject. Um, <coughs> 
Uh, is my voice clear? Is my yeah, voice yeah. clear? Okay. Voice is clear, doctor, yes. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So uh, let me just go through the uh, uh, discussion uh, of today, <clears throat> uh, which is uh, <clears throat> the uh, financial planning uh, 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 or financial or financial advisory, <clears throat> uh, which is uh, basically uh, uh, it's regarded as an industry uh, per se, a part of the Islamic finance uh, industry, <clears throat> where not many people actually, in fact, are involved uh, in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, niche market, especially when it's come to the uh, uh, Sharia part of it or the Islamic part of it. I just want to give some uh, maybe uh, uh, opening remark uh, with reg uh, regarding this before I go into the uh, to the subject matters at least to give a uh, very broad understanding and picture uh, about this um, and I give maybe examples uh, uh, of Malaysia <clears throat> uh, because that's what the information I have but definitely I do believe that this market or this industry do exist elsewhere in some jurisdictions where Islamic where it, where Islamic finance is operating. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, part of the industry which is uh, mainly governed by the Central Bank and the Security Commission uh, because uh, in its uh, product and services uh, that are some uh, product and services which are under the jurisdictions of the Central Bank and others products also under the jurisdictions of the Security Commissions. And this is why the professional financial advisor or the financial planner uh, should be licensed in the context of Malaysia. I think uh, it is the same in other jurisdictions, meaning you are not allowed to provide a financial advisory unless you are licensed uh, to do so. Otherwise, you will be subject to penalty and even uh, imprisonment or jail as a result of that. Uh, so it is a, it is a regulated uh, uh, market. It is a regulated industry uh, by licensing. Uh, and in order to, to, to get a license, you have to get the uh, qualifications, which is in Malaysia provided by two bodies. The first one is the APFAM, and the other one is the Malaysian Financial Penny Council, uh, whereby you have to go through the RFP uh, modules, which are seven modules, then you get uh, the uh, qualifications, uh, then you join a financial uh, advisory, uh, then uh, you would get uh, the license from the Security Commission, then you would be allowed to provide the, a financial advisory in consultancy, basically, uh, within the uh, regulatory framework of the market. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's not a really uh, a very uh, uh, well-known industry per se uh, in, the, in, the, in the context of Islamic finance in some jurisdictions, uh, but conventionally it is a spreading, uh, it is uh, regarded as advanced uh, uh, business sector, especially in the US, uh, uh, UK, Hong Kong, and even in Singapore and other jurisdictions. And in Malaysia, we have now close to 20 years uh, uh, so far experience in this kind of industry. So uh, uh, the, the topic is uh, very broad, but maybe uh, if we have the chance in the future, we can have uh, a shoot through a second uh, uh, round on this topic because we can't uh, really cover it um, uh, within this uh, uh, short time. But maybe uh, the objective of uh, today's session is to give a uh, is to give a kind of introduction, uh, if I may, uh, introduction, uh, kind of uh, high level description on, on this industry, to understand the Sharia financial planning framework and how it is different from conventional, to understand maybe some of the systematic uh, uh, process in developing the financial plan, because at the end of the day, uh, the end product would be a kind of financial plan given to the customer for execution. Um, to provide a kind of comprehend how the uh, basically to construct uh, 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 put a strategy for Islamic financial plan, and importantly, how to appreciate the key aspect uh, of Sharia within the structure of the financial plan. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we may go to some basic uh, introductions and concepts, uh, try to maybe uh, give an overview of this. Uh, but we don't have definitely the time to go and dive deep, you know, on the applications uh, and, and some other related, <clears throat> uh, basically, um, uh, 
uh, samples uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but we may uh, uh, highlight uh, some point here and there. And as I mentioned, maybe uh, if we have uh, time in the future, we may go a second round on the application. <clears throat> uh, so uh, here we are talking about, before I go again um, uh, to the uh, topics, because I just want to have, uh, to give an, an overview and understanding uh, before um, we go to the topic, at least you, you will know, especially for some people who are not aware about this, uh, uh, financial sector in Islamic finance, what this guy is talking about. So I would like to give a brief, you know, uh, further brief uh, uh, concept. So at least when we dive slowly, you, you know what I'm talking about. So here, basically, we're talking about the financial planning or financial advisory. Why I keep saying financial advisory, financial planning? Because in the context of Malaysia, if your license is under the central bank, basically, you will be framed as a financial planner. If the license is provided by the security commission, will be framed as a financial advisor. But basically, it's a form and substance, but in substance, both the same. Um, and um, the financial planning or the financial advisory basically is, is looking, it's not, number one, it is not an investment agent because it could be understood as such. Uh, so the financial plan is not a financial, uh, is not a, 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 an investment agent. Uh, number one, number two, uh, he is not also uh, a TECAFOR agent, meaning insurance agent. So he's not an insurance agent and he's not an investment agent, but he's uh, combining both and beyond because uh, he provide definitely in the package of the solutions, investment packages, he provide also the capital package and beyond that, because it goes to the education planning, it goes to retirement planning, it goes to the analysis of your gaps and uh, looking at your financial uh, uh, status basically and give a proper recommendations to move forward, uh, how to manage uh, your asset uh, and your wealth. So basically the, this kind of uh, uh, knowledge is, uh, uh, is looking at the uh, a financial health uh, of the person. Now, if you go to a doctor, medical doctor, you know, he will get the information about from what you are suffering from and uh, give you a kind of report about your health and the uh, problems that you have and what kind of course, course of actions as a medicine you should take to improve yourself. And this is the same, but on the wealth. You go to the financial advisor, basically he will gather information from you uh, and uh, analyze your status, look at your needs, then give you a kind of report <coughs> that describes the financial health of you, anal uh, analyzing and highlighting the financial gaps in your wealth or your uh, uh, wealth status and give recommendations and course of actions in order for you to improve and behave financially within the recommended financial ratio, you know, uh, to avoid any kind of, uh, uh, to avoid any kind of uh, what's so called uh, uh, unforeseen circumstances uh, or, or financial suffering or financial distress. So that's what uh, the uh, financial uh, uh, planning is about. Uh, it could be for uh, wealthy people, people who have very high net worth, then the mainly advice would be on managing the investment. And it could be even uh, a middle class or even uh, a low income class that they have problems how to manage their finance, how to manage their wealth, how to manage their debt, uh, and the financial planner basically will do uh, the uh, process, the SOP of gathering, uh, as we are going to talk about later on, the sixth step uh, uh, to build the financial plan, uh, which basically include uh, uh, by determining the objectives uh, of the client or your clients, and also um, uh, doing the analysis uh, then uh, I've either, either fighting the, the gaps and putting the recommendations in order for the person to improve. So that's basically what it's about uh, in a high level description. But before we go to, to reach that, let's 
put, put some basic concept, you know, uh, on the context of the uh, world planning from Sharia standpoint, because here we are talking about a, a Sharia financial planning, we are talking about an Islamic financial planning and advisory, we are not talking about the conventional one. And as a result of that, some aspects should be appreciated when it comes to wealth uh, and other related components uh, in the world from an Islamic perspective. Um, this is so basic that just to remind you, financial planning can be understood uh, from the protections of Sharia and the wealth, meaning that al-mal is very important in Islam, um, and it is one of the maqasid al-sharia, hafd uh, al-mal, it is a very uh, well appreciated uh, and be point of focus um, uh, in Sharia. <clears throat> and uh, of course, from an Islamic perspective, uh, wealth, um, uh, uh, should only be used according to the guidelines provided by Sharia or provided by the real owner who is Allah Azza wa and, and as a result of that, there are some obligations or rights uh, related to this. Why this point should be understood, especially by the financial advisor? Because later on, when you engage with the clients, when you engage with the person, you know, uh, so your guidance, your advice should, should be Sharia compliance as well, meaning you have to deal with the wealth as not the client is the owner, but the client is the agent. That the, that the wealth has a responsibility, has obligations and so on and so forth. And that concept should be basically uh, captured in your advice being a verbal communications with your clients or even when you draft the final, uh, financial plan reporter to your client. So all activities related to wealth should be um, uh, such as protections, investments should be conducted on the basis of the relevant guidelines of Sharia. For example, if you want to uh, uh, package an investment, it should be Sharia compliance investment. If you want to do protections, it should be Sharia compliance to account for, for example, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the second point, basically, what is the financial planning that we are talking about? Um, in case the, the voice is not clear or uh, uh, the connections is, you just let me know. Um, so uh, one of the definitions uh, provided is uh, financial uh, planning, uh, personal financial planning is an interactive process uh, designed to enable consumer or clients to achieve uh, their uh, personal financial goals. Normally the person has a financial goals. He will come to the financial advisor to seek assistance, how to achieve my financial goals. That's what uh, the financial plan and advisory will help uh, the clients. According to the MFPC uh, definitions, uh, the financial planning is a process and methodology uh, that we are going to touch upon later on when we talk about six steps uh, of the, of the uh, uh, financial plan. Uh, it's a methodology. Why methodology? Because we are going to use the sum of the financial ratio that we are going to highlight later on. And the objective of this process and methodology is to assist the client, to assist the person, uh, to determine their financial, what they want exactly. For example, he will tell you, I want to retire with one million US dollars, for example. Um, can I achieve this? I want to retire with the one house that I own uh, and maybe um, one shop I rent out. Um, I don't know, I, I want to uh, retire it, for example, uh, uh, with the, a net worth of, uh, let's say, 500K, uh, whatever. Uh, every person has a different needs, uh, different financial goals uh, that he may opt for. Uh, and also objectives and the priorities. And priorities is very important because someone may have a few objectives, so the financial plan will help you to put the uh, objectives in order according to the priorities and according to the financial status of the person. Because uh, you may not be able to retire with a, a house um, that you own 100% or a one, one uh, million, for example, uh, 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 fixed deposits uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Oh, no. What the charge? The charge? Uh, can you hear me? Seal can hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, because my just uh, headphone uh, have been disconnected. Okay, fine. Let's uh, carry on. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, again, uh, talking about um, uh, the priority and resources that meet the optimal uh, and practical manner. So practical manner is really important uh, because uh, a person may have a financial goals. And at the end of the day, you have to be very practical with him that uh, uh, these goals practically cannot be achieved. 
uh, this uh, financial goal uh, cannot be achieved. Uh, so um, uh, the discussions based on the process that you have, the methodology, the financial goals that uh, the clients has, the priority that you will have to put at, then you will see practically uh, whether he can meet uh, the objectives uh, or not. Uh, and we'll see from where you can get the decisions as we are going to look at, at the five, six financial steps where one of the financial step, which is number two, is gathering the data. You have to gather the data and based on the data that you gather, then you can advise uh, your clients. And by the way, you know, uh, later on, uh, maybe the, uh, the Al-Iqtisad uh, Islami may share with you the slides and you can use uh, this uh, financial ratio that we are going to talk about later on, and everyone can test it on himself, you know, because this is, uh, uh, it is uh, not related to uh, a specific category of, of, of a community. This is applicable to everyone, meaning that everyone can test this financial ratio on himself. Uh, <clears throat> then he will see whether uh, financially he is healthy or not. Similar whether you are spiritually healthy or not. Uh, and similar whether your body physically healthy or not. So again, there is a status of health related to the role, to your, uh, uh, your, your, your spiritual, uh, through some KPIs, some to some financial ratio, like a dhikr, qirat or Quran, you know, qiyamul layl, and so on and so forth, like uh, uh, the uh, status of your physical health, whether you are, you know, uh, you have the, the, you are diabetic or not, you are basically, uh, uh, your weight and so on and so forth. And also for the financial ratio, you have health. Uh, so it's not about um, only money that you have, but it's beyond that. That's what I'm going to talk about, inshallah, within this uh, short time. Um, so this is one of the definitions also by the Security Commissions of Malaysia, a person who carry on a business of analyzing the financial circumstances. And this is a really key point when you say, uh, um, analyzing the financial circumstances because uh, one of the very key process uh, of this uh, business or this kind of advisory uh, is basically the analyzing of the financial data of the person that you gather. Uh, another person and provide a plan. You have to give him a plan how to go uh, uh, and move on. You know, uh, he may come and tell you, you know, I have kids, uh, I, I want to have a plan uh, to, uh, secure my educations of my kids in the university. And I have three, three, uh, three boys, for example. Now we are in the uh, primary um, uh, school or they are in the uh, high school, how to plan their education in the future. Tell me, me and my wife, I want to retire, for example. So how to plan my retirements, you know, uh, and uh, have a sustainable uh, income. Uh, uh, I want to look at my protections, you know, whether basically uh, my, 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 my insurance or my Islamic uh, insurance and takaful are adequate or not. Uh, <clears throat> and look at the investment, look at my financial, my, my, my assets, my liability. And so that's basically the analysis part. Uh, and as I mentioned, everyone has a different objectives, you know, and the different circumstances and the financial advisor basically play this important role. And this mention, including investments plan in securities, whether, you know, uh, it is searchable with that or not. That's a different story on, on a fee and charges. Uh, meaning part of the package that you provide is the investment. Uh, meaning that because uh, if you have a gap and your uh, current uh, uh, financial status, uh, the revenue uh, is not sufficient for you to achieve your goals after five years, 10 years, whatever is the arrangements and your plan. So basically the investment will come uh, to put uh, uh, to put it in in account of different investment classes to generate the target, the targeted return in order to meet uh, your future objectives. So the, the the investment is a very important uh, part of the package of advisory. So when it comes to the Sharia financial planning, definitely it is a process in assisting the client in determining the financial plan, uh, goals and priority and resources. Uh, uh, again, within the parameters of Sharia. So the, the distinguish between the convention and the Islamic definitely is that the Sharia comes in to moderate the advice. Sharia comes in to moderate uh, uh, the planning uh, 
uh, to determine what you should do, what not you should do, to determine the priorities and so on and so forth. And that's where the a financial advisor, if, if he has a very good understanding about Sharia, so basically his advice would be very appropriate. Just give you a very simple example. Uh, if you, one of the package, uh, you want to package something to your client, and you want to one of his packages to go for holiday, for example, family holiday. Mm -hmm. Just a normal example. <clears throat> um, so uh, when instead of having a just normal holiday, it could be package your Umrah, for example, you can advise because at the end of the day, the obligations of the financial advice is just to advise. You know, you can package that kind of trip uh, uh, where you can capture the Umrah. Uh, if you want to give a donations to anyone, so that's where the advice you to see whether he has fulfilled his zakat obligation or not then the emphasis will be on the zakat, not on the donation. Now, if he has fulfilled his zakat obligation and you want to give the, the money to elsewhere, that's where basically you direct that donation, for example, to maybe a related family. Well, uh, well, uh, uh, this one, the, the, the people uh, who are close relative to you, part of the family uh, and close to you uh, may have uh, additional obligations uh, on help compared to others. So here, how you, you, you basically um, uh, advise uh, your client basically to manage uh, his donations, uh, his wealth and so on and so forth, to conform with the Sharia, commands with the Sharia, uh, what's so called uh, recommendations. So uh, the uh, funds will be deployed according to the Sharia. That's where the Sharia, importance of the Sharia comes in. In case, for example, he has some kind of uh, non-compliance investments from his uh, past portfolios, or if you have some mixed portfolio that he, he, he shared with you. So that's where you advise him how to shift his investment from one Sharia compliance investment to a Sharia compliance investment, how to advise him to, to manage those uh, uh, non-Sharia compliance income that had been generated, uh, and so on and so forth. So the understanding of the Sharia parameter basically will help uh, how to structure the financial plan according to the Sharia. And at the same time, even the communications and the advice, you know, if he wants to give to his uh, uh, daughter uh, or to his uh, um, uh, son, uh, so that's where the advice comes in to manage, you know, the, the, the justice and equity uh, in dealing um, with the children, uh, you know, uh, without uh, any discriminations, uh, uh, establishing justice and equity in wealth. So those points, uh, the a person may not be aware of, uh, and he may just use the money uh, the way he likes, driven by his desire or uh, uh, by uh, wrong advice could be. Uh, uh, but when the financial planner comes in uh, during the communications, uh, during the interviews, during the uh, sessions, you know, uh, if you have been engaged or appointed as a financial advisor, that's where basically your proper thought uh, should be uh, given to make sure basically the wealth have been deployed in a proper way, uh, whether the person is in a surplus, then the money will be deployed in a Sharia compliance investment and uh, a proper uh, distributions. Uh, and if the guy is not basically uh, having a very good financial state, and this is how you advise him in, uh, ba uh, basically how to move uh, slowly without compromising on the Sharia uh, rules and principles. Um, <clears throat> the scope of the financial plan, and basically the scope um, is about a productions of a financial plan which have uh, in carry recommendation. Uh, that's basically because um, practically, of course, uh, your friend can talk to you, you can advise him, but here we are talking about the business. Uh, your friend, your father, your sister, uh, your neighbors, your friends, they can uh, they seek advice, you can help them, or no issue on that. But here we are talking about professional uh, business and professional advisory. Normally it, it, is, a, it is a provided in a form of a comprehensive financial plan which carry recommendation. Um, and the person normally who comes, uh, he's, uh, uh, could be uh, suffering from some uh, challenges. Uh, and your uh, role is to help him how to uh, move on. Uh, and someone could have no financial distress. He may be have a problem that he has a lot of money, how to manage the money. So it depends. What is the status of your clients? What's your clients wants? And someone 
uh, he has uh, not a lot of money, uh, not suffering, just okay, uh, middle class, but he wants to manage his wealth in a proper way. So later on, after five years, 10 years, 15 years, even 20 years, uh, later on, uh, he, he will not get uh, surprises, you know, when he go into retirement, because sometimes people may not be aware about wealth, only say, oh, you know, if I know this, I have done this. If I know this, I have done this, because maybe he's not in the, um, uh, he didn't have the chance to, to, to seek advice or uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, evolutions of the financial advisor is not that strong. And sometimes we are very passive with our uh, uh, wealth. And uh, uh, this one, uh, just want to, before I, I, I cattle, this one has nothing to do with the tawakkul because sometimes uh, people say this is, you know, is related to the risk. Yes, it is related to the risk uh, and has nothing to do. This is uh, from the planning. It's a, it's a kind of a, a planning so you can uh, manage your wealth in a very proper way. Uh, sometimes you may have the knowledge, fine, you can do it, but many people, other people also, they don't have the knowledge. And some people, they have a, a financial distress, but they don't know how to manage uh, their wealth in order to move on and, and manage that distress. Uh, they don't know what is important for them, basically, uh, uh, in order uh, to um, basically look at the uh, financial uh, uh, screen because they are not equipped with the financial ratios uh, that uh, determine the status of the financial health of, of the person. So they would just, you know, uh, live uh, in a very ad hoc uh, uh, way. A person could be a bankrupt. I mean, you may see a person driving a Mercedes car, but in fact, he's a bankrupt guy. He, he may drive. I mean, you won't get uh, uh, misled uh, by a person, I mean, living in a bungalow house and driving a Mercedes. The guy could be bankrupt. Uh, if you put a financial uh, a ratio of screening and he's on the edge basically of collapse. Maybe he doesn't know. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, 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 point uh, that uh, basically uh, uh, we, we try to mention. It has not, it doesn't contradict the faith. It doesn't contradict the, uh, uh, the Iman. It's a part how to manage the wealth. Uh, it's uh, full under the protections have done man. Mainly if you manage your wealth in a proper way. So that's to me the uh, complete uh, understanding of Hevdul Man, meaning the money has not been invested and it is related how to manage your life and the life of your uh, family as well. So it's again, it's about putting recommendation to address the client's needs in investments consideration, risk management, the capital planning, for example. Uh, if you don't have a, a plan for a, for a uh, for a family uh, or, or for a medical, that one is related to the protections. It could be advised to have a policy on that. Uh, if you don't have, uh, for example, uh, your saving um, uh, is not is not adequate, you have to uh, uh, what so called advise you how to uh, improve your, your saving. Maybe you have a not good uh, uh, what so called uh, uh, ex expenses behavior. He may advise you how to manage. Uh, uh, in a proper way, your expenses, how to manage them. Uh, he may advise you how to uh, reasset your, um, reallocate your asset, uh, the asset allocations in order to improve your income. Maybe the one single job is not enough. So how advise you basically to diverse uh, your, your, your profile in order to increase uh, your income here and there. So that's basically at the end of the day, it's recommendations based on your status because everyone has his own problems. Everyone has a different, uh, uh, what's so called uh, uh, circumstances, uh, has a different challenges. The other one, financial planning, basically the scope should be widened to cover the requirements and recommendation of Sharia. Again, as I mentioned, it is a um, deen wa dunya, it is wealth and uh, it is dunya and akhira. It is basically, uh, uh, this uh, world and the hereafter. So it's a combination of the two. Keep understanding for us that the, 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 as we mentioned, the money doesn't belong to you. The money is a means for an objective, but of course uh, it has to be combined uh, between uh, the two things. So what's after what else about us and see back in the day. I mean, it it's a combination between basically seeking uh, both uh, the benefit of both worlds. Uh, some of the objectives are to provide directions to the personal financial decision. Uh, keep in mind, uh, in the financial planning, the decisions is the client decision, not your decision for you. You give the scenarios, 
give the options, give the recommendations, decisions is uh, his decision. You don't make decision for him. Allowing the person to understand how the financial decision can affect his finance. I'll just give an example. If let's say you don't have, uh, uh, you, you, you need some liquidity, you don't have uh, liquidity. Um, so you may, you may get advice that you may sell a car. If you have two cars, you may sell one car. Or if you have one car, you may sell one car and use a motorbike or sell a car and use a bike or sell a car and use the public uh, transportation. For example, uh, the decision may impact your lifestyle, may impact some part of the finance. Um, let's say you have a big house, you may leave the big house and go to a smaller house in order to create liquidity, in order to create a surplus. Because let's say you need the liquidity, you need the amount and you cannot get that amount. So when we look at your asset, we find that you are living, for example, in a big house. So one of the things that uh, either you, um, uh, uh, what's so called, you rent a small house uh, and uh, you lease out uh, your house, then the surplus will be additional liquidity, or you sell the house rent, then there will be substantial liquidity available, or sell house and uh, buy the big house, buy a small house, then you have uh, uh, some uh, decent convenient liquidity. So it depends uh, each one has a different uh, circumstances uh, and a different uh, what's so called uh, situations. And based on that, uh, decisions may impact uh, the status of, of the person. Um, the proper fulfillment of the obligation recommendation of the financial, uh, financial, uh, financial nature prescribed by Sharia, and basically uh, conducted the financial management process in a way uh, which is compatible uh, with the Sharia. Uh, this is some of the uh, points uh, that uh, make uh, the, uh, I'll just uh, go quickly on that. Uh, I'll just uh, point it out just to, uh, to have an idea, but I'm not going to do this because a lot of points here just to manage the time. But here just to try to distinguish, you know, the implementation of Sharia in the financial planning and how it is different from the conventional one. I think one of the points here is that um, financial planning, of course, assists people in order to manage. So it's a kind of town where the body will touch on. So you ask this person. So here, uh, even though you could be paid uh, by that advice, uh, you can may have some kind of commissions from this uh, business, but still, similar to a doctor, you know, a, a medical doctor, he advises you, you know, but he's paid for that. Uh, again, the teacher, he's teaching you. Uh, it's a good, uh, and he could be rewarded for that, but he's paid for that. So there is no uh, contradiction with that. So still financial planning is about helping others, uh, especially people who are suffering from financial distress and they have very significant financial gaps in their health, in their wealth. So basically the recommendation will be very prominent uh, to, to, to be pointed out. Um, <clears throat> Of course, uh, the financial planning is not related to the distressed people. It could be for a rich people, for a normal, for everyone, basically. Um, the, uh, the financial planning should be in line with the objective of Sharia, wealth and finance. Maqas and Sharia are very important uh, to determine the main component in driving the financial uh, uh, planning in the best achievements. We have the Maqas and the Sharia as well, the priority, as we mentioned here instead of going for holiday, so you can package the holiday with Umrah. In case of giving your money, you may consider the zakat first. If no zakat, so basically you, you may give donations uh, or help uh, sadaqa to the, your relatives who, who may deserve help uh, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, uh, the concept of the Islamic view uh, uh, is, is a dominant factor uh, in the financial planning, meaning that the money doesn't belong to you. The money belongs to Allah. You are Asians uh, in dealing with the money. There is an obligation that are a responsibility that associated with the wealth. Uh, you have to adhere to like zakat and so on and so forth. Financial planning is in the process of methodology design basically to achieve a financial uh, objective as we mentioned it. Um, it is both uh, related to fortunate and unfortunate people as well. Um, uh, this is one very important that we talk about it later on. Also, where the financial planning depends on the information disclosed by the client. I think we'll talk about it later on because this is a very key point uh, when it comes to the financial advisory because it's, uh, it's uh, communications uh, with their clients uh, and um, it depends um, how adequate the information disclosed by the clients. 
if he hide information, so basically the information will be very little. It's difficult to advise him, but he furnish a lot of information, especially financial uh, informations. It give you uh, a very uh, kind of uh, raw material data that you can help him uh, in a very uh, uh, significant way. Uh, of course, the incorporation of the religion dimensions in the financial planning is very important, including involvement of the voluntary sectors. The uh, the uh, the work will come in here. You know, uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, investments, so we have as we're going to see the investment in this dunya and the investment in the hereafter. So you have to tell him also at the end of the day, the person uh, when uh, uh, the objective, of course is to secure himself in this world, but also the objective is to secure himself in the hereafter. And the hereafter basically has to make sure that after he dies, uh, his income and his account keep running. And this is where the voluntary sector comes in, especially in the work, whereby the financial planner basically advise him how to set some works, whereby after a person pass away, um, so at least, um, uh, he can ensure that basically uh, a revenue uh, in a form of hasanat, a reward is still ongoing uh, uh, to his account of the hereafter, then he can secure his uh, uh, safety in the hereafter. So it's not only a bank, but managing the wealth in this world uh, to invest in different investment classes, but also it's an investment in the hereafter because uh, the ultimate objective basically is to deploy the wealth as a means to secure yourself in this world and the hereafter. And this is a, a very important point uh, in, in the financial advisor that he has to stress upon it because sometimes a person is not aware, the client is not aware. Uh, <clears throat> and sometimes he may get a wrong advice here and there. And sometimes he can be driven by his personal desire. And sometimes he's not uh, be uh, really uh, uh, aware about this, so the financial advice put his thought in order and show him the directions and put the proper recommendations, you know. Uh, to him, he cannot depend, unfortunately, this is a fact. We cannot depend on our kids. We cannot depend on our children, um, you know, to do that the best the children that they can do. If he remember you is with the dua, but uh, it's a very rare that people will go beyond that and do work for you and do a very deed, a good deed because it has an implication on finance and money. So since the money belongs to you, so you have to take care of yourself uh, whilst you are alive uh, before you die. And this is part of the advice that the financial advisor should put it uh, very clearly in the thought of his client. And of course, uh, identifications of the financial problem, that's uh, one of the key. Uh, what's your problems uh, from what you are suffering? What do you want? Uh, and also, uh, you identify the sources, um, a source of your money, source of uh, 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 your incomes. And this is why later on, we look at the assets. Uh, I mean, financial statement, you have to look at the asset, what asset you have, what's the liability that you have, what's your net, uh, net worth uh, status, what's your um, um, uh, inflow uh, income, what's your outflow, um, cash, cash inflow, cash outflow, what's the net? And based on that, basically, we look at your problems and your needs and give the recommendation. Um, um, so this is some of the values of the financial planning, uh, the amana trust, mutual help, honesty, integrity, sincere and transparency. Uh, and uh, among the important points of the uh, uh, financial planning in ISBA uh, is basically uh, conducting a business of financial planning uh, uh, it's fall within the HISBA uh, by advising the clients in all aspects. Because here, uh, the financial planners could be regarded uh, in a way as muhtasib. Muhtasib meaning uh, uh, when he sees something not right. So he has to advise the client, this is not the right thing to do. And you have to do it this way. Example, he doesn't... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, look at uh, justice and equity in the distribution of the wealth to his children, for example. Um, that's where you should uh, remind him uh, about the right course to do. Um, allocation of asset, uh, you have to advise him whether it is appropriate or not. Investment of the asset, uh, Sharia compliance versus non-Sharia compliance. Protections, Sharia compliance protections scheme versus non-compliance. Uh, all these basically, um, his, his even financial uh, 
uh, goals, whether it is uh, relevant to him or not. Uh, I think uh, he's, uh, the, the Hizbah part, uh, which is part of understanding Sharia and its features, and Maqasid Sharia and its concept are very important, basically, uh, to be captured in the financial advisory. Um, this one, I think I have talked about it, uh, which is the type of investment, investment in this world, investment in this hereafter. Investment in this world, cash and asset, investment in the hereafter would be in a form of reward, in a form of hasanat. People only think about the investment in this world. Um, uh, and just look at the cash and sands, uh, but they will forget to invest in the hereafter. And this is a very, uh, uh, what's so called, um, uh, this is a wrongdoing actually, number one. Uh, and the person will not realize that only when he's on the verge of dying. Uh, and and, and, uh, and uh, the person cannot uh, basically um, uh, deploy uh, the asset for investment in this world to satisfy his need um, and forget the investment in the hereafter. And this is part of the advice of the Sharia, financial advisor, the financial planner, in order to guide him properly how basically to manage your wealth in order to invest in this world in the hereafter. Meaning that you live uh, in this world uh, in a very secure environment, but when you pass away, you will live also in a very secure environment because uh, uh, you have uh, given the uh, rights and obligation on your wealth. You have observed the zakat, you have observed the donations. If there is a qart hasan, if there is a uh, what's so called a hadiyah, if there is a hiba, if there is a sadaqah, uh, if uh, helping uh, the poor, the needy, the families, uh, justice and distribution of the wealth. Uh, to the wife, uh, on the nafaka, to the kids, on the nafaka, to the third parties, and so on and so forth, uh, to yourself as a waqf, um, uh, either in a form of cash waqf or a different kind of waqf. So basically, uh, you keep uh, generating uh, uh, revenue in a form of hasanat in the hereafter. This kind of uh, uh, dual investment portfolio is a very really important in need uh, uh, indeed to, to, to uh, secure the hereafter because that's basically the ultimate, eventually the ultimate uh, uh, objective uh, is to uh, secure the hereafter because uh, the uh, 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 life is temporary in this world, the investment in uh, this world is temporary. You have to capitalize on this to look at uh, what is the uh, last thing, which is the hereafter. So this is part of the... Um, uh, uh, management of the investments from the uh, hereafter perspective and from a Sharia perspective, which is basically the obligation of the financial advisor to guide uh, the client to do so. Uh, this is on the uh, priority. I think I have talked about it, uh, which is related to Maqas of the Sharia. We have the priority of uh, ad din and Nafs, you know, and Nasr. And you have Al-Mal, which is a very important. Then we have al hajiyat and Al-Tahsiniyat, the Anis and the complementary. And you have to distinguish between the uh, level of the wealth, uh, how it serves one of these uh, three uh, with the uh, what's so called uh, the help <coughs> of the financial advisor. <coughs> Uh, so let's go to the application, but not really a uh, deep application, but still uh, what has been discussed is the concept. <clears throat> Sorry. What has been discussed is the concept, um, how is the financial advisory is important uh, and uh, some of their scope. Uh, uh, but here now we move to some kind of uh, the application of it uh, and how normally practically uh, you demonstrate and you reflect the thoughts and concept and aspect into uh, a practical financial plan that will be given to the uh, your clients. And as I mentioned, you can apply it on yourself also. Uh, and of course, here again, we are not diving too much because we don't have the time for that, but uh, at least uh, we go to uh, uh, some indications uh, on the uh, uh, practical aspect of the financial planning. So when we look at the financial plan, normally, as I mentioned, uh, it is, uh, at the end of the day, it is like a report. You know, at the end of the day, it's like a report. <clears throat> and I think uh, if you have the chance to see some of my books, uh, I, I put, uh, I have one of the publications, you know, uh, on the financial planning, and we put around the three cases, uh, three cases there. So if you have the chance to look at that book, so those, ha those cases, how is the report looks like? Meaning it is a documented, um, uh, it's a documented, uh, what's so called, 
report that normally uh, will be submitted to the client or to the person uh, in order um, in order for you basically, uh, or in order for the clients to follow up uh, that one. So among the important components uh, is basically number one, personal data. Personal data, normally you have a kind of, uh, you have a kind of, uh, uh, you have a kind of, uh, So uh, the first one is a personal data. Personal data basically is a, uh, is, is a kind of uh, information uh, documented uh, by the financial advisor. Uh, and uh, normally you have a kind of template, you know, I don't have to, the chance to share with you, but in the future, inshallah, you have a template that you have to, to use these templates to get the, the documentations or to get the uh, uh, information, meaning, of course, the, 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 the names and other things, but uh, among the information that you, uh, the personal data of the person, meaning that, for example, of course, whether he's married or not, because it may have implications, uh, whether he works or not, his wife works or not, how many kids he have, the age of the kids, and other information, you know? So that's personal information. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the client's objectives, meaning the, what do you want? Well, or what's your problems? Uh, sometimes may, a person may come to the doctor, medical doctor, I don't have any problem. I just want to look at financial, my, 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 my health, whether I'm okay or not. So it could be the case, uh, you don't have a specific objective, but we want to screen you. So we do a financial screen on your health, on your uh, on your wealth. Then we give you the report. But you may have a problem, you know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm coming close to the retirements. Uh, I just want to check whether my retirements is adequate or not. Uh, uh, I have two, three kids, and my current income. Can I this one secure them education in the future and so on and so forth? Um, uh, you know, um, my kind of status and uh, and uh, in cash flow is it adequate, for example, to 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 uh, secure my uh, um, my retirement after the age of fifty five or the age of uh, sixty five, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, this kind of um, uh, potential informations, you know, uh, the medical expenses, you know, uh, when you when when you're getting uh, old, you know. Uh, is your scheme of protections with the couple adequate? Is there is overlapping or not? So what would you suggest? So it's my estate planning, you know, how to manage your estate planning, your have wealth. Uh, someone someone may have, have no problem, but he may tell you, you know, I have houses, I have shops, I have money, I have gold. Then what? You have kids, this, then, then what? If you die tomorrow, do you have a record on those assets? Um, uh, if if uh, if you die tomorrow, do you have a kind of wasiya that govern uh, that uh, uh, all estate that you have? Uh, is there any planning or your estate on the wasiya and the hiba and and the and the, and the, and the, and the wakaf and so on and so forth? You have investments. Are you managing uh, your investments uh, in proper way and so on and so forth? So uh, the objective. What's your objective? You have to determine the objectives. Uh, the other thing is basically you have to identify the problem and the issue. And normally this one will come uh, through the analysis. When you analyze the data, you will get uh, issues and problems. Then you have the assumptions. And normally it's economic assumptions, inflations uh, and uh, capital income, and, uh, other things, uh, investments, uh, um, uh, revenue, uh, uh, revenue and return, those assumptions to be in the calculation. Uh, you have to balance it. The balance sheet normally is in the, the first template that you have when you get the, the information, you have the personal data. Then you have the asset. What are the assets that you have? Then you list down. What are the liability that you have? Then you list down. Because you have to get the network of the person, asset minus liability, then you get the network. Then you see the, the guy is in a deficit stated or not. Now, if he's in a surplus, okay, he's lucky. If he's in a deficit, so meaning that technically he's a bankrupt. Um, he's insolvent because um, uh, he, uh, he, has a, he, he's, he has a negative network. So uh, you have to get the balance sheet. What is the asset? 
uh, cash equivalent uh, uh, what's so called to, to, to the cash and the liability, long term, short term, in order to get the network. So this is the balance sheet and the asset and liability. Then you get uh, in the same template, in the same uh, uh, what's so called, uh, we call it data sheet uh, that you have. Uh, the cash flow, what is the in cash flow, what is the out cash flow, why? In order to see what kind of income he has, the guy, whether he has one job, two jobs, um, whether he has only depending on his um, work or he has, let's say, income, he has shop rental, has a house rental, or maybe has other incomes. So the income flow from where the source of the fund is coming and also where the cash is going. The money, the expense side, where the money is uh, being deployed, where it has been expensive. And again, to get the net cash flow, um, whether it is positive or not, whether the uh, income cash flow basically can service the expenses or he's overspending uh, or his spending is not uh, uh, an appropriate, uh, then basically the discussion will come. Uh, then the zakat, uh, tax uh, informations, risk management, what kind of uh, uh, what's so called um, Takaful he has, um, he has zero, maybe he's not well protected. If he has a lot, maybe there is an overlapping. Um, investments, do you have investment, yes or no? Why? Because later on we see the investment play a role uh, in the screening, uh, personal screening ratios. Uh, if you have investment, what investment that you have? Uh, 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 if you don't have, fine, but if you have, you can use that investment basically in, in, in putting the recommendation, the estate planning, you know, you have assets, uh, whether we can build a wasia, when we can build a, uh, what's so called a HIPAA, where we can put some kind of uh, uh, estate planning for education. Do you have kids or not? Are you planning to have their education or not? Then after this, through the analysis and run the financial ratio, determine the financial health of the person, then you keep your recommendation after you discuss with the client that, the executions will come. So this is in overall, the main component of the uh, uh, financial planning. And normally you have a kind of, uh, as I mentioned, data sheet uh, that's basically uh, uh, gather all the information that uh, to be fit up. Now, the, one of the very important points here to be highlighted is that it has to be a very strong um, uh, relationship between you and your client. Of course, if it is you and yourself, you know how to, to do that. If it's a, a family group, fine. But if a stranger, uh, that's where uh, it is based on the transparency uh, and the trust built with your clients because he will give you uh, his personal uh, data. Of course, it is protected, um, but he will give you uh, his assets, his liability, his cash inflow, cash outflow. All these are very sensitive very personal. So this is why it's a very professional industry. It's a professional uh, work. And the uh, relationship basically uh, is a very confidential uh, with the person in order for him uh, to disclose uh, all this uh, information so you can uh, do your job in providing the uh, recommendation. Uh, and some people are reluctant uh, to engage a financial consultant because of this, because they don't want to disclose uh, their assets, their wealth uh, to a third party. <clears throat> this is one of the reasons actually. Uh, and in Malaysia, we have this, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, a register and the central bank around 500 consultancy firm. And in the, the security commission, we have around 500 consultants, meaning overall we have over 1000 consultancy firm in the market that basically uh, 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 working in these professions. Uh, and also um, we have two regulators body and association. One of them is the Malaysian Financial Planning Council, which is the MFPC, which have over 13,000 members. Um, and the industry is uh, uh, keep expanding, <clears throat> keep expanding. Uh, the second point I would like to, to touch is uh, the financial ratio. Let's look at this financial ratio. This is a little bit practical maybe. Um, and this is why the financial advisor seek uh, the data in order to use this nine personal financial ratio to determine the financial health of the person. And as I mentioned, everyone can use this financial ratio on his purse on himself uh, to assess uh, his financial health, whether he's a financially sound or not. 
Uh, I would just go briefly uh, again because of timing and uh, uh, because of the concern of the time and also a lot of information here. So I just try to be brief here. Uh, excuse uh, me, Doctor. Yes. Uh, just uh, I just would like to share if you have example next Thursday at the same time if you are available we can just continue maybe after you uh, conclude the session today. Uh, we shall see, inshallah. I can't promise really, but <laughs> yeah, uh, inshallah. Can, uh, I think yeah, we have we have seen we have seen that important minutes. for us. I think very important session. Yeah, we shall inshallah. inshallah. Yeah, maybe oh, uh, we will we'll try that, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. <laughs> but inshallah, I mean. yeah, Thank maybe you. at least we can uh, we can uh, look at the financial ratio. Maybe uh, uh, we still have time. Uh, so we have a nine financial ratio where normally you apply that on on even yourself, on your father, on your sister. And see uh, the uh, uh, the uh, number one is basically the basic liquidity ratio. This is a very important because it's talk about um, uh, how much, how many months you can sustain uh, if your income, uh, if you lose your job, if you lose your job, let's say you are working uh, um, in a company, then you lose your job. So what is the recommended ratio? Um, in order to have it uh, aside uh, in case your income comes to a stop. This one, we call it the basic liquidity ratio. How to calculate that? Normally, it is calculated from the cash and cash equivalent over the monthly expenses. Uh, recommended uh, month, six months, meaning that in case uh, you lose your job, uh, you have six months money to sustain without a job. So this one, uh, now if you, if, you, if you do the calculation and you find yourself that you have um, two months, three months, so you have to uh, adjust and improve uh, uh, your cash flow uh, in order to uh, get the six. Of course, if you bear more than six, it would be better, but the recommended, we're talking about the recommended between three to six, but the recommended is six months. So cash, cash, and equi uh, cash equivalent, um, this one, uh, when you look at the asset, I don't know if, it, if you go to the asset side, for example, uh, is it, uh, if, you, if you go to the asset side, we have number one, cash and cash equivalent. So in, in the asset side, we have cash and cash equivalent. Then we have the investment. Then we have the personal asset. So we are just talking about number one only. Cash equivalent, cash equivalent only. Meaning your saving account, your current account, um, cash in hand, uh, fixed deposit. This is the cash in cash equivalent because uh, the fixed deposit is uh, very liquid. You can uh, unlock the fixed deposit in maybe um, two days, one day, two days, it depends on each bank, but every three days. Um, so this is, uh, this is uh, meaning if you take this one component, not the others, only the first one, cash and cash equivalent, meaning what you have in fixed account, saving account, current account, and of course, uh, uh, fixed deposits. And of course, whatever you have, uh, maybe you have some money at home, we are talking cash in the bank or others, and cash equivalent. Uh, if you take that one, then you divide it, you divide it by the monthly expenses. The monthly expenses, basically, it is the total, um, uh, out cash divided by 12. Total out cash, normally you get it from here. You know, as I mentioned in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in, 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 you have a template like this, so this is the cash flow. This is the cash flow statement. So what you have, you have the in, um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, inflow and you have the outflow. So here we are talking about outflow, right? The outflow is divided into fixed and variables. So you take the total. This is why, as I mentioned, this template, uh, you have to take it and fill it up. And the person uh, that you test this on yourself, you have to fill up, you test this on your, on, on your clients, you have to fill up this information. Uh, then you take this uh, outflow, you go back here. So you take the cash, cash equivalent from the asset uh, liability that you have together, and you divide it by the uh, monthly uh, expenses, which is basically, gather from the income inflow and outflow, and which is in this case the outflow because the outflow is the expenses and the outflow divided by 12, you get the one. If you divide, it depends how much you get. Three to six, you are good. Below that, 
problem. Moving to number two. Number two is we call it standby liquidity ratio. Now standby liquidity ratio, you just take the investment, uh, the investment liquidity, meaning that if you go to the asset, it's number two, the investment asset. Investment asset, you may have unit trust, you may have funds, you may have uh, uh, equity, shares, uh, I don't know, uh, REITs, uh, whatever investment that you have. You take that investment only, meaning you don't take uh, the, sorry, you don't take the uh, cash in cash flow because it is done. You just take the investment only. When you take the investment only, <clears throat> you take the investment divided also by the monthly how much you get. The higher is the better. Because the standby liquidity normally uh, will, uh, will, will, will tell you how much you will sustain again after your income is lost, plus after you have uh, used uh, all the six months of the first ratio, let's say the first ratio cash over expenses give you three months, meaning um, after you lose your job, you sustain three months. Now, after that, the liquidity ratio will give you another buffer how much you are going to sustain again. Meaning if, uh, if it gives you three months, meaning three plus five, meaning you sustain uh, five. If the first one give you six months, second one three months, meaning you can sustain eight months. This is without asking any borrowing. Huh? We are not in the borrowing first. We are uh, looking at the financial help first before you go to other solutions, but you have to know yourself in order to design the course of action. So in the financial ratio, uh, uh, number three, which is the uh, saving ratio. Saving ratio, basically, uh, the saving is a surplus, it's a network, basically. Um, this is the network. This is the asset, by the way. Uh, it's a good, uh, this is the asset, asset equivalent. This is an example, uh, example by figure something. Cash and cash equivalent, 43,000. Let's say the investment asset is 400 uh, personal, and your total asset is um, a triple A thousand. Liability, you have current liability. So the network basically uh, is the asset minus liability, you get the network. Network is, in other language, is the surplus, uh, it is the saving. Uh, and the cash inflow, cash outflow. Cash outflow is the expenses here, as we mentioned. Uh, divided by 12, you get the monthly expenses. Now go back to the first one, which is here. Uh, on the saving liquidity, you put the surplus, meaning you put the network, meaning uh, 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 what's so called uh, asset uh, minus liability, you get the network, how much? Let's say you get uh, whatever amount divided by the gross income, gross income here, the total cash inflow. You get it from here. Um, this is the uh, cash inflow. First one here. Uh, the first one, the top, on the top right, uh, left is the inflow. That's the gross income. Below is the outflow, meaning divided by 12, you get the monthly expenses. Then we go back here. So basically what you do, you do the network on over the gross income, uh, recommended is 10%. If you are 5%, you have to improve your saving. Uh, this is the recommended by the financial plan. It doesn't mean it's a Quran and Sunnah, but this is a business, you know, based on projections and based on advisory and uh, recommendations, like the doctor, you know, what we give you, uh, what is the, the issue, what is the recommended course of action. So this is on the uh, um, a financial health. The uh, recommended is minimum 10%, meaning if you get less than that, you have to improve uh, the ratio. <clears throat> How to improve the ratio? Basically, you have uh, what's so called the... Uh, uh, saving uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the gross income, meaning that the saving should be uh, improved, you, meaning you have to improve your net worth. How to improve your net worth? Well, there are different uh, ways, for example, uh, getting additional part-time job, uh, maybe reduce your expenses, um, uh, what's so called, uh, maybe um, if you have some kind which uh, have a, a rental uh, with small amount, you may do renovation, they increase the rent, uh, maybe if you uh, uh, stay in a big house uh, with a very high rental, maybe you can get a small house with a small rental. So there are ways how to 
uh, increase the net worth by managing the allocations of uh, your investment. Maybe the investments, they give you only uh, 2%. You may change uh, the investment to another class that give you 3%, 4%. Uh, and so on and so forth. So there are other things, which is not the discussion here, but there are other ways how to manage the network and improve it in order to improve uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the result of the ratio. Uh, the, uh, uh, the others is basically the number four is a liquidity asset uh, uh, to net uh, ratio. This is basically to provide information to the amount of the client network that it is in the form of cash and cash equivalent. This is a very important point because you see uh, many people that I have seen it personally, um, they are uh, sound and wealthy. But if you ask him, can I borrow from you 1000? He will swear God, I don't have cash. And he's telling the truth. Why? Because he's illiquid. He's illiquid. He may have assets. He may have assets uh, uh, or all the money, all the liquid has been deployed in hard, uh, in hard, uh, hard assets or investment. So liquidity is less. Yeah, he is, he's, uh, he, he's not liquid person. Even if you ask him, uh, maybe he has money and he borrowed. Why? Because his investment is a stack in a hard asset, maybe lands, not productive, maybe uh, 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 houses uh, not rented for whatever reason, especially like if tourism, for example, you know, pandemic COVID-19 has impacted many people. Uh, um, house, uh, two, three cars supposed to be rented out, not rented, staying home and whatever, you know, you can imagine. So, uh, but cash, liquid cash, he has it. So he may have a problem, he may have a problem. So you have to make sure that you are a liquid person. And to, to do that, so you have to look at the liquidity, whereby you have to take only the cash in cash equivalent, which is the first one, uh, only the first one, only the first one, cash in cash equivalent, all the figures, saving cash, all this. Uh, and uh, you divide it basically by the network, uh, uh, which is the saving. Uh, and uh, minimum recommendation, 15, uh, what's it called, uh, 15%. So you have to be 15% to be enough liquid person. Otherwise you end up, you are very rich and you have a lot of assets, but maybe if you want to uh, uh, maybe buy, a, you cannot buy a dinner, maybe you cannot buy a drink because you don't have cash. Well, I'm just giving an example, but if you want to take fly or someone or maybe someone go to the hospital, you want to pay, you don't have enough money. Why? Because you are not illiquid, even though you are rich. So you have to manage between uh, um, uh, the, the, the being uh, healthy uh, in your wealth, being a wealthy, uh, and being um, what's so called uh, 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 liquid. Uh, so this one, a liquidity ratio, you have to maintain 15%. Uh, and debt to ratio, I think uh, this one. Uh, uh, is a clear 50% max, you know, you look at uh, your total debt over your total asset. So uh, you shouldn't exceed uh, 50%. You have always to maintain uh, yourself uh, as, a, as, a, as a healthy person. Otherwise you'll be, we are putting maximum 50% because 50% will be zero. Uh, you know, like uh, asset uh, uh, minus liability. If you get zero, you are basically have zero saving but you have zero liability. You don't have $1 in your pocket and you don't have $1 debt. You are just zero. Uh, so if you improve a little bit on $1, if asset minus liability $1, meaning you have a surplus of $1. <clears throat> so uh, this is to look at the uh, asset. The, the other one, debt service ratio, uh, this is basically the ratio that uh, normally the, the, the person um, has uh, the annual or the monthly, depends how you, you, you do it, uh, to service the debt with your net income. So you take the monthly uh, uh, debt payments, uh, uh, basically you take it from uh, uh, the liability side, uh, from the liability side, uh, because that's the debt, you take it from um, uh, the uh, uh, liability side, 
uh, then you divide it by your uh, monthly income, uh, the net monthly, monthly income. And again, we are talking about 35 uh, um, uh, or lower. Uh, the number seven is basically no mortgage debt. Uh, so the first one is everything, but this one is excluding the mortgage because the mortgage normally is a, uh, is a higher. So you take again, the total no mortgage payments uh, over the uh, incomes, uh, we are talking about 15% again. Here we are talking about the net worth, uh, uh, sorry, uh, net investment to net uh, worth ratio. As I mentioned, this is why it's very important here in the uh, uh, um, uh, what's so called uh, statements uh, that you have a column on the investment side. Why? Because this one basically uh, it which shows the value of the investment asset that you have excluding the personal uh, uh, item that you have. And here we are talking about the total investment asset that in the column of the asset over the net worth, have, then you have a, a 50% or above. Then the solvency, again, net worth over the total asset, the higher is the better. So this is to show your status of bankruptcy, uh, how you are exposed uh, to insolvency. <clears throat> uh, so that's, uh, I mean, briefly on, on the... Uh, on the uh, what's so called uh, a personal financial ratio, uh, and this one is taken is taken from this. Meaning, you have a financial statement uh, where you have the assets, uh, cash and cash equivalent. The number two investment asset. Then you have personal use. Normally, personal use will not be included uh, because they are meant for uh, personal use uh, only in case of necessity where you have to sacrifice those uh, um, assets. Uh, this is to build uh, the asset, to build the liability, to build uh, the network. This is why you need this information to be filled up. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the next one is the liability, uh, short-term liability, long-term liability in order to determine the network again. Uh, asset minus liability, you get the network or the saving. And here the, the cash flow movements. The cash flow is very important in order to, to to understand your clients, basically what are the kind of source of income that he has and where this money is being deployed, where the money are going for spending. Is it for tax, utility, children, educations, credit cards, for what? So that's how, uh, how uh, basically uh, you get it. And this is very important. Uh, this is why if the total expenses, because we do, uh, if you remember, we divide by the uh, monthly expenses. Uh, when you divide by a big number, so the figure will be small. So in order to improve the figure results, so what you have to do, you have to shrink the expenses. How to shrink it? You have to manage the outflow, uh, outflow cash and see whether these expenses, because that's what the advisor will tell you. You're subscribing to this, subscribing to this, to this, to the phone, to the data, to the internet, to the newspaper, to this, to this, to this, you know, lot. Then the cash flow is moving there. So, of course, in normal situations, if you have money and you are financially held in overall, no doubt, why not? What uh, uh, No issue on that. Uh, as long as it is halal, uh, no, no, no issue on that. But I'm talking about a person who has suffering some financial distress. So he has to revise all these outflow expenses, all these expenses. He may start to curb and, and, and hold the expenses, he may start to cut some of the expenses in order to uh, shrink the monthly expenses to improve the result of his financial ratio. And this is where the financial advisor has to tell him, you know, do you need this, do you need this? Even you need it sometimes, as I mentioned, even you need it, but this is the only way. Of course, based on the information provided, this is the only way to move on. This is the only way to improve uh, uh, your, 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 your uh, uh, financial wealth. Otherwise there is no way. So he has to disclose. And if he has to disclose without the information he has, uh, you have uh, to advise him accordingly. If you have a maid, a maid you pay her, for example, a salary, this is out expenses. So you may not, you may stop uh, basically having a maid. Uh, your, uh, this is uh, really important when it comes to the financial planning. Uh, the decision is made by the clients, but the recommendation is by the financial advisor, and it may have an impact on your lifestyle. A person, for example, used to have a maid, he may end up not having a maid, for example. A person used to drive a car, he may end up that he may start to take a public transportation, even a temporary, even a temporary, because uh, situations uh, vary from each uh, person. And uh, based on the information that you have, 
based on the data you have, based on the resources that you have, based on the income that you have, the financial planner will advise you. If you have, if you are okay with all this, fine, uh, no issue. Even you have two, three maids, what's the problem? Here we are talking about uh, the circumstances and situations of each uh, person. Uh, this is some of the examples, uh, 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 as I mentioned, uh, which is uh, if let's say with the figures, just to uh, give um, uh, uh, illustrations only, if your uh, asset is quantity for cash and uh, cash flow investments and personal, this is the total, this is the liability. Um, then um, you do the, the network, which is basically asset minus liability. You will get this, uh, like for example, this guy has a saving of 346,000, example. Huh? Uh, the outflow of this guy is, uh, inflow is 159, um, outflow is 123. So the net, uh, the net outflow is 5,000. So he has a surplus also. Uh, so um, this one looks like okay uh, in the first hand. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, you deploy this one in the other financial issue. Then you see whether he meets those financial issue or not. Um, uh, and here, basically, when you get the information, it depends. Someone has an investment, so you drop it. Someone has personal uh, asset, definitely everyone has some. Uh, but the investment, not everyone. Uh, cash, maybe. Equivalent as uh, uh, cash, not everyone. So it depends. Liability also, long term, short term. Uh, it depends. Uh, uh, this is why it may vary from one person to another person. All right, so this is uh, on the financial, uh, this is basically the personal financial planning, which is regarded as a core um, um, financial ratio to be deployed and used uh, based on the information gathered by uh, the financial advisor on your client, where he will gather information on the cash and cash equivalent, investment, personal asset, then short-term liability, long-term li liability, then he will gather information on, of course, uh, in cash, uh, inflow cash and outflow cash, uh, in order for him to be assisted, in addition to the unknown financial information. Non financial information is also uh, very um, uh, important. His obligations, example, uh, a person he's married and he has a family, but he still has a responsibility of his parents. So there is a responsibility of his parents and some other expenses, for example. This information should be disclosed as well to the financial planner, so, uh, and so on and so forth. So non financial information should be also. Um, um, provided in order to get a very uh, a good uh, advice. Uh, just to move on, uh, the following point is basically uh, the uh, uh, additional uh, aspect related to the financial planning. So uh, number one, the financial plan should uh, ensure that the Sharia guidelines always apply throughout the stages of the implementation of the plan. Uh, the financial planner should um, avoid means of investments uh, and deposit uh, that are not Sharia compliance, because as I mentioned, uh, one of the uh, uh, advice could be investment, should be Sharia compliance investments, deposit, Sharia compliance deposit, uh, and so on and so forth. A proper discharge of the financial obligations at Zakat, Hajj fulfillment, past debt, for example, uh, 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 and uh, 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 should be basically uh, properly implemented. The, the Sharia financial plan also is required to uh, educate Muslims' clients on the Sharia procedures and requirements. That's what I mentioned. He's a, a, a muhtasib. He's a, having the obligations to guide the person to the right uh, course of actions um, to ensure that he's uh, discharging his uh, obligation. It is the responsibility of the financial planner also that uh, he design, uh, uh, that he design with the collaborations, uh, uh, with his collaborations, Beefing from any uh, uh, basically objections from Sharia anger, as I mentioned, it, and should remind the Muslims' clients uh, to the broader, longer uh, term goals of Sharia by having a dual investments in this world and the hereafter, as I mentioned. Uh, so he has to look, meaning as uh, uh, his uh, safety and interest in this world and safety and interest in the in the hereafter. So he has a uh, uh, <coughs> importance to manage his wealth. Uh, in such a way that fulfill uh, the objectives of Sharia or how to do our insights or Ibadah with its broader concepts. So it's not only about uh, money and how to uh, uh, fulfill your personal desire, but how to fulfill your Sharia obligations as well, which is related to the hereafter investment, which is very crucial. Um, 
And the matter of Adam and Qata Ilam in Talat, this is very important also hadith that should be in the mind of financial planner and remind the client uh, on that because you cannot depend as a mission on your, uh, after you die, your uh, wife will do. After you die, your kids will do. Your uh, uh, children will do. I don't think they will do. They may be sad a little bit, you know, but definitely, truly and honestly, they will do that. Uh, they do mourning, definitely. They will... Uh, uh, pray for you, but after some time, believe me, you know, you'll be history. <clears throat> so uh, uh, it's very rare, only, you know, uh, uh, you know, the person who's really um, uh, care about his father who passed away, the best that he has is the dua. But the dua sometimes is not sufficient. So that's where the waqf and the investment in the hereafter should be secured by the person uh, through his financial clinic or on wealth before he passed away. He shouldn't be in the custody in the hand of basically people who may take uh, care of uh, uh, mirat to be distributed uh, um, accordingly. Uh, and the wasiyah uh, will be part of the structural via as well. This is in the estate planning. Uh, the wasiyah uh, will be part to manage uh, that angle uh, very crucially. Uh, <clears throat> financial planning also, uh, this is very important. Uh, if you are in a business, so normally it is a uh, uh, done through the ijara, you are basically a person that you will be hired to do the job. Uh, it could be agency because you may be appointed as agent to exhibit some of the investment schemes, some of the takaful schemes, some of the um, uh, estate planning scheme and uh, wasiya and so on and so forth. You may be acting uh, in one hand as ajil, you may be acting on, on the other hand as ajil. You can be also on a juala because you may take some commissions on the investment scheme. This is part of the return. There is a kind of breakdown of the fee of the financial planning, which is basically also regulated by the market. So that one is a, is a, is a part of the, the, the disclosure and transparency. Uh, Sharia compliance assessment, assessing the Sharia compliance of the service provided by the financial planner. So uh, once the um, financial plan is drafted and submitted to the uh, uh, client, to the person about his financial health, about his gap, analysis all the aspects, discrepancies, course of actions, recommendations, um, implementations, whether it is in the area of investments, risk management, um, uh, what so-called educations, retirements, and so on and so forth, um, it has to be Sharia compliance, meaning it has to be passed, the test of Sharia compliance. In other words, you cannot include any advice uh, which is uh, violating the Sharia rules and principles uh, when it comes to uh, financial or non-financial actions uh, for the uh, person. Uh, this is the... Uh, uh, we are in the last two, uh, two slides, actually. Uh, so uh, the, this is the sixth financial plan that you should look at. Um, uh, briefly, uh, we talk about them. Uh, and this is the core of the financial plan. Number one is basically step one is the setting goals and objectives and priorities. And this is, of course, in communications uh, with the... Um, in communications with, with the clients where you establish um, uh, the goals, uh, why, when, where, who, um, asset are uh, built to be, the objective and, and so on and so forth. These are a very important stage uh, uh, with the clients. What's your problem? What's your objective? Uh, what, what's your desire? What's your priority? Financially, uh, normally it is financial. Priority financial goals. As I mentioned, I want to get uh, retired with uh, 500K. I want to retire with uh, a house. I want to secure my education of my kids uh, um, and so on and so forth. I want to secure um, what's called a policy, you know, uh, until my retirement. So I don't know. Anyone has uh, his different uh, financial goals and different uh, objectives, different priorities. This is different from one person to another one, but you have to capture it uh, properly. The number two, uh, you gather the data, and this is very crucial part. This is, you remember, when we talk here about the, um, uh, here, this is where the data, this is part of it, but normally it is a quite uh, two, four, five pages, um, uh, uh, data collecting sheet, uh, information from the, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, clients to be collected, including his personal data. And one of the, in addition to the personals and other information, 
uh, is basically um, the assets, uh, which is the cash, cash recovery, investment asset, person asset, and liability, long term, short term, then the in cash flow and the out cash flow. So this is among the crucial information and that and others informations. Uh, sometimes you take notes and uh, because that's only where you, you draft the, your, your report. So you take notes, what are the kind of uh, income he has, you know, sometimes it is, uh, he may not think about it, but he may, he may, he may, uh, uh, it could be relevant and appropriate uh, to be part of it. Uh, so uh, getting data is very important. Uh, and uh, during the getting the data, there's a section, so I didn't uh, talk about it here, but it's related to the um, risk appetite of the person, meaning that you have to test his risk appetite when it comes to the investment. There are around 10 questions. 10 questions to be asked for the clients and the client has to answer. When he answers at the end of the day, you get the score and the score will determine the risk appetite of the clients, whether he's a high risk taking, moderate or conservative. Why this is very important? Because this one will be deployed in the investment. So when it comes to the investment euro, you know what's the risk appetite of your clients when you want to recommend investments. So if he's, let's say, very um, moderate, so you have to select a moderate class of investment. If he's very conservative, so you cannot go to equity, you cannot go to uh, other high uh, risk uh, um, uh, investment, then you go to the fixed deposit, to fixed Sokuk, uh, for example, money market, uh, fixed deposit, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is a very important also sections that you will gather uh, part of the engagements. Uh, uh, because the, the data sheet is a, uh, has a composition of financial and non-financial, both are very important to have an understanding of the client. This is normally go to a few sessions. Then step number three is your homework. You know, analyzing the information, assessing the financial status, you know, looking at the gaps, uh, running the, uh, um, uh, the client's need, the resources, constraints, options, uh, uh, running the financial ratios and see what's the result and what are the gaps that exist in the financial health, uh, financial wealth uh, of the, um, the clients. And based on that, uh, the uh, 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 step number four will come in to develop and present a financial for implementation where you detail the problems, you provide the solutions, you put the strategy, you do the written um, uh, format uh, of the clients and put the uh, course of actions and recommendations and so on and so forth. So he can do it in order to achieve the goals in order to achieve the goals. And of course, it is a conversation, it is a discussion. So he may not understand, you have to explain, he cannot do it, you have to go to other options. So it is not like a one way you have to do it, but this is, this is what we call it a recommendation. And the decision at the end of the day uh, is the clients, but the communications will take place. Number three, executions. All good, all good, all okay. Investment okay, I mean, uh, uh, what's so called risk protections, okay, retirement plan, okay, education, okay, uh, restate planning, okay. If all good, <clears throat> course of actions, the adjustment maybe in your lifestyle. If the guy is okay, maybe you will not impact his lifestyle, you just go for asset allocations, then you do the executions. Getting uh, permission to execute uh, the financial plan through the recommended uh, investment agents, uh, brokers, uh, uh, the capital operators, funds, managers, uh, brokers, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, then you have the stage six, which is the monitoring uh, and checking uh, uh, on the uh, financial executions, uh, uh, whether there is adjustment needed or not, uh, and whether the uh, objectives are running according to plan, and so on and so forth. This is to verify that the plan is uh, on track uh, through evaluations uh, and revision. Uh, then uh, this is the... Um, Construction of the financial plan, as I mentioned, uh, uh, is the same as I mentioned. The six steps I just uh, put uh, on the analysis uh, informations uh, among the, the things that you analyze. Uh, among the things that you analyze is the estate planning, zakat, tax planning, cash needs, debt management, investment planning, uh, retirement needs, and education. So with this, thank you very much, and uh, I welcome any comments or any uh, question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hassan, for this wonderful uh, presentation and excellently explanation uh, of the topic, planning and also requirements, steps. Uh, I think all the participants benefited a lot from your lecture, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you, reward you. Uh,
Yeah. And, I mean, Ustaz, uh, I think there are two, four questions, I guess, in the question and answer section, if you can see. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, that's meant for companions. <clears throat> yeah, from our brother uh, Muhammad Ishaq, you know, he asked about uh, whether it is permissible for Sharia to accept specific amount from investors. Um, that's meant for the company, which is not refundable. I think the concept of not refundable funds uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, is accepted by, uh, by Sharia, the, provided you know it is justified. Well, what, well, what you mean? Because sometimes the, run, the, the non-refundable funds or fee or amount, sometimes <clears throat> whether even, uh, for example, the applications is successful, this one is done or otherwise, uh, because it is uh, against uh, a specific work to be performed. Um, it's related to SOP, it's related to procedures, related to some cost incurred uh, by the, uh, by the uh, company or by the investment scheme or by, so normally they will pay sometimes uh, <clears throat> uh, similar to uh, when you have um, uh, what's so called something you have registration fee, but you don't attend the functions or you don't proceed. So you cannot claim that registration fee because it's again, again, some kind of administration cost that will be incurred. So here it depends on, on, on what's the underlying uh, uh, basically justifications of, of that one. Similar also to the uh, al Arbun, as you know, Arbun, if you put a kind of uh, uh, Arbun to, to, for, 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 for uh, transactions that uh, uh, you you uh, you uh, don't proceed with the transactions accordingly. The arbon amount placement will be forfeited. Meaning, uh, you know, in other words, is not refundable. The arbon in Sharia is not refundable, not related or not similar to what so called Hamish um, al which is refundable. So the concept of refundables, uh, as far as Sharia is concerned, it is accepted in principle, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, and the arbon reflect that features. But again. Uh, it has to be uh, properly justified. It has to be properly justified. If it is properly justified and, and, and there is no uh, shuba about it, uh, we don't see any issue on that. Wallahu the third value of money, uh, yeah, the type of uh, money, uh, the, the, the uh, time value of money, yes, it is, uh, yes, so it is, it is deployed, it is used uh, in the financial planning. Uh, <clears throat> In the equations, but of course, in, in the financing uh, part, uh, it is used differently, uh, <coughs> provided the asset is there, meaning a uh, uh, type of uh, value of money is used in Islamic finance, provided the underlying asset is there. But in the equations, as a guideline uh, for the financial um, planning, uh, they, use, they used to do that, uh, time value of money and the discounting, um, it is part of the calculation for just to get the figures. Uh, and the calculation, even though uh, it doesn't reflect any kind of financing, it is just uh, like a, a mathematical uh, approach to get the figures. So yes, true, it is uh, deployed in the financial planning. So for present value, yeah. Uh, I didn't get this one. I take a general financial class and I'm not sure what is uh, considered. I don't know. Time. Could you please help if you happen to know? Uh, yeah, I think it's the same question. It's just typing, I think. Uh, a flow of uh, types uh, of write-up, but it's talk about uh, time value of money. Uh, as I mentioned, time of value of money, it's using in a two different ways. Uh, using in a, in a calculation, in, a, in a, especially in the financing side, that's one more issue, uh, especially when there is an asset. Um, and this is why uh, in Ben Mojir specifically, if you, for example, um, I sell you this mobile now uh, with 100, uh, uh, if deferred payment by is 110, so the money increases as a result of that, 
uh, this is justified acceptable by Sharia in Bayern Mojil, provided the asset, which is the mobile, uh, is there. But on a, on a, on a pure without uh, uh, without um, asset, it would be basically regarded as a, as interest. <clears throat> but in the in the financial plan, uh, to use uh, this kind of uh, cash flow a discount and uh, a time value of money for the sake of getting uh, uh, some um, uh, numerical numbers uh, as an indication, but it does, has nothing to do with the. Uh, uh, financing or borrowing is just some mere calculations to get some specific uh, um, uh, ratios and numbers and results. Uh, we don't see any issue on that. I think that's all for the questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hassan, again. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the distinguished uh, guest and our lecturers <coughs> who join us today, uh, we would like to thank you very much for your participation and attendance. Okay. And we would like to thank our Director General, Dr. Alal Ibaid, and all the members in Nadal Iqtisad Ristami for their effort and time. And especially on behalf of our Nadal Iqtisad Ristami, we would like to thank Dr. Hassan for your time, for your effort, and for this wonderful presentation. May Allah reward you, Dr. Hassan. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, we'll see you again uh, very soon. In, uh, in next uh, program, whenever you are available, inshallah, we'll be in contact with you, Doctor. So if you have any uh, last or concluding remarks to us, please, Doctor. Yeah, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate your uh, invitations. Uh, thank you again very much for your kind invitation to share these sessions. And I wish that Natural Islam this time we do our further, inshallah, sessions uh, for the uh, benefit of the Ummah, inshallah, when it comes to Islamic finance. Thank you very much. My regards to, the, to your team and appreciation again to the invitation. Thank you very much. Most welcome. With that, we uh, conclude our session here. Nasallallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yuwafiqna bima yanfa'una wa yubarika fina wa yanfa'a bina al-Islam al-Muslimin wa yujazina fi al-Dara'in. Ameen. Nasallallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawfiq al-Sadaad wal-Ikhlas. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Uh, regarding the certificates, uh, please uh, you go and visit our website. Uh, it's sharia.org. I write already, I have written our website here. You can see again, I'm going to write our website in the, in the chat group. So you go to website, sharia.org. Sharia So you will see there, uh, Madarich is Daris Shahadat. So then you need to register your name and your information, uh, either in English or in Arabic. It's, it doesn't problem. It's no problem. So you just go and register your name and you will receive a, a username and password. Then you uh, mention the program or lecture that you attended. So you can see here in, in the chat group, uh, Manasat uh, al you can see there. You can go also directly. Uh, you click on that and then you can see how to get a certificate from the website. So you state the program that you attended. So I think that's all. And see you again, inshallah, in a next program. May Allah bless you. Uh, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi